Uh, that's an extremely difficult task since they have so many weapons. Hopefully, uh, number eight, Mr. Harvey, maybe you'll have a subpar performance. And if we can control the football offensively and keep their offense off the field, we think we got a shot. Well, we got to play good in all three phases of the game. Uh, we got to move the ball consistently on offense and uh, try to get out the hole. We can't get backed up in the hole. Hopefully, play well on special teams so we don't have to go the long distance and uh, not turn the ball over on offense. That's one of our goals. And then just play a sound, sound game on defense and make them earn everything they get. Try not to let them get big plays on us. Okay, Jason Diggs got injured on Tuesday. He might be out for a few weeks. How much will that affect your plan? Well, anytime you lose a player of his caliber, I mean, uh, you're going to feel it a little bit. Uh, we, we feel as though we got a real good backup in Kevin Jenkins. He could probably could be a starter on a lot of ball clubs, and uh, we feel confident that he could come in and, loot and uh, you know, win the game for us or do, do a fine job. But we're certainly going to miss Jason, you know, offense and defense. Coming up next from Sterling High School, it's Colonial Conference football on Channel 5. Store Cable Channel 5 presents high school football. Today it's the Red Raiders of Paulsboro and the Silver Knights of Sterling. Today's game is brought to you by Really Painting and Appliance Bright of Paulsboro, by Democrats Francis Duffy McDivitt, Steve Salvatore for Freeholder, Donald H. Wagner for Surrogate, and Alice D. Corsi for County Clerk. And in part by Downey's Fine Furniture, Route 47 in Clayton, by Big Marty's and the Southwood Shopping Center, and by Gloucester County College. everybody, Mike Linder along with Bob Schreck. We're here at Sterling Regional High School on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. A little nip in the air for the first time this season. Somewhat of a win, but not one that should prove to be disastrous for either team. And that's important, Bob, because we're looking forward to a great game and you'd hate to see the elements come into play. Two teams coming in here undefeated. This is what you look for at this part of the season. A key game, a key matchup in the Colonial Conference, Paulsburg and Sterling. And it's a classic, Mike, in terms of similarities in the teams, both of them with great defenses. Paulsboro unscored upon in his three shutout victories. Sterling, traditionally a good defensive football team, has only given up two scores in its three games. But unlike other Sterling teams in the past, they are a multi-dimensional offensive team, always ran the football. Sometimes we saw them, they never threw it the entire game. Jim Gallagher's team, a little bit different this year, Mike. They will throw the football. They may throw it long. All right, as we say, you come to this point in the season, you're looking for a matchup of undefeated teams. You say, where's the key win? Let's go get the game of the week. We've got it. This one marred, however, by one disturbing out of Paul's Baron Bob. This could really maybe prove to be the difference. Jason Diggs, the Mike, has had a tremendous start to his senior season at Paulsburg. He is out for this football game, maybe out as many as five games. They won't know that till next week. Broken thumb suffered in a tackling practice Tuesday at Paulsboro High School. Diggs has averaged about 110 yards a game rushing. We saw the job he did against Woodbury a couple of weeks ago. He's been an outstanding defensive player. They really are hurt two ways by the loss of Jason Diggs, not only because he's a great player, Mike, but because he's a great leader on this football team. And of course, I'm sorry, that means that Kevin Jenkins, his backup, is the guy who's really going to have to do a job today. But I talked to Glenn Howard, the head coach, before the game. He said, look, Jenkins is a guy who could start on almost any other football team in South Jersey. He'll get the job done. And Glenn Howard says he had everything going this year, even though he was relying very, very heavily on the shoulders of a very young guy, a freshman, and maybe the responsibility and the mantle of leadership passes to that guy. And for a 14-year-old, tough time. You're talking about Kevin Harvey. You know, Mike, well, you and I have seen a lot of uh, great football players in the 13 years now. We've been doing games on Channel 5. But uh, I, I think sometimes we are given to too many superlatives about somebody so young. This is a guy that everybody's talking about, Mike. I don't 
don't think we've even seen the best of this young man yet. He is averaging 17 yards per carry. He is passing 11 for 17 in the three games. He probably, Mike, has the best balance of any high school football player at that age I've ever seen. And he's the guy that could make the difference in a football game. I look for him because of the absence of digs today to carry the football more. All right, a lot of people say this is going to make the difference in the Colonial Conference this season, that although it's early, fourth game of the year, this may well be the determining game in the championship run for the Colonial Conference. Paul's Burn Sterling coming up from Sterling right after these words. <laughs> A lot of excitement here at Sterling Regional Day on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. You're looking at Nick Guerrero, today's referee, as he speaks to the captains for this Colonial Conference matchup. Balls, Burr, and Sterling. Of course, in the Colonial Conference, they toss the coin a half hour before the game so they know what's going on. You can see that Guerrero is Sterling has won the toss and elects to defer. Paul's ball will receive. Go, gentlemen. All right, as you can see, as usual, Bob, uh, teams winning the toss choose to defer almost always now. They want that choice in the second half. And today's ball game, with the absence, could become a bigger challenge than Paul's birth thought it was going to be. And they knew coming in it was going to be a huge challenge anyway with this outstanding team that Gallagher, Jim Gallagher, has put together at Sterling this season. Paul's really hasn't been tested, Mike, and it's three easy shutout victories, but uh, I think the Raiders are going to be tested today, and with Diggs out, it, uh, I look for it to be an even-up ball game. What a gorgeous day for a football game. Not as big a crowd as I expected, Mike, for a battle of unbeatens. It's uh, very, very difficult to explain it away. You would think that the place would be just bounded by people all the way around. There are a number standing, which would perhaps fill the stands on the one side. And Sterling does have a big stadium here, so maybe more than we think. But I think you're right. It's uh, perhaps the earliness of this game coming up in the season, filled by many as the game that is going to ultimately decide the Colonial Conference, although it's week four for a most foot here in South Jersey. That's the Hallsborough team. Been introduced, Sterling being introduced now by the public address system. A lot of media coverage for this game today. Mike, the Inquirer here, Sam Carcitti, Walt Burroughs of the Camden Courier Post. The Western County Times is here. Local radio station, New Jersey Country is broadcasting the game today. You have a feeling that everyone knew what we knew, that this would be the game, and pegged it in early on the schedule. The real question is, how can a freshman rise to the occasion, not only coming into a game that everybody has told him is the biggest one he'll play, but then to have the responsibility handled to him when the running back digs goes down with that injury maybe the one thing that helps him is the fact that it happened early in the week some time to adjust to it and mentally to deal with it if it had happened maybe yesterday and they faced that problem today maybe even bigger for a freshman psyche he's been unflappable so far but of course they haven't been tested we're all standing now for the national anthem at sterling regional high school
Battle of the Unbeatens coming up from Sterling. The Red Raiders of Paulsburg, the Silver Knights of Sterling Regional, both coming in with their 3-0 records. Paulsburg, just awesome offensively and defensively to this point in the season. We so saw a uh, Collingswood club last night, Bob, defeated by Gateway 20 to nothing. Handily. Uh, I didn't think they were that weak defensively, and of course, Paulsburg just uh, destroying them as they have nearly everyone, 32 to nothing at this at uh, that opening game. Then beating, of course, Woodbury 38 to nothing, and then having uh, their way score-wise, at least with Gateway 27 to nothing. Although lots of people, including yourself, indicating that was not a game uh, that was that far apart except on the scoreboard. So we got a great game here today, and we're gonna mention something to you right now, although this one is just getting underway. Next week, we've got Deptford Township and Washington Township. So two weeks in a row of at least anticipated great football matchups. That might be the final game in that great series too, Mike, with Deptford swinging over to the Tri-County Conference. Paulsburg will receive the kickoff David Pearson teeing it up for the Silver Knights of Sterling Regional High School. And Sam Swanson deep along with Jenkins for the Red Raiders. So here we go. Two unbeaten short kickoff. It'll be taken at the 22 yard line by Tyrone Bradshaw. Bradshaw almost breaks it clean and advances the ball to the 40 yard line. David Santana with the tackle for Sterling. And the Red Raiders of Paulsboro with their first possession of the football game. They are quarterbacked by the remarkable freshman Kevin Harvey. Well, Jim Gallagher has always been noted for putting together outstanding defensive clubs. We'll have to see exactly how he comes out, how he determines to defense the powerful and multifaceted offense from Paulsburg. The difficult task that Paulsburg presents is the fact that they do so many things and can do it from different formations, starting with the slot eye. Kevin Jenkins, the new tailback, and he'll get the call, and he goes nowhere. He is thrilled at the line of scrimmage. This guy got him here, Ernest Stewart, number 99. 300-pounder. I guess maybe uh, Howard said, let's find out right away if we can move that guy 300 pounds. He probably said, look, all you're going to have to do is stand him up because we don't expect that he's going to have that great a lateral movement. Well, they may have stood him up, but they stood him up right in the way of the ball carrier. Right, Second down and 10, no gain for Jenkins. Hey, 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 hey. Jim Davis, the fullback Back behind the quarterback Harvey. Second it. down and 10. Harvey with the option right. The pitch to Jenkins, some room to the outside, but a nice bit of pursuit. And open field tackle, or that would have been a much longer game. The play made over in the corner by Devin Carter. Well, at the same time in the backfield, they, they uh, took Harvey to the ground after the option as if they were delivering a message. He clearly had gotten rid of the ball, and the coaches on the far side talking to Nick Guerrero, the referee today, and saying, come on, who are we kidding? They knew he had gotten rid of the ball. There was no need for that. Yeah. As he was thrown hey, hey, by Ken hey. McCulligan, 200 oh, pounder like playing over at the left stay defensive end. Jenkins got four. It's third down and six Watch from the 43. Go. Harvey, quarterback draw, and he'll get only about a yard. So an excellent first hey. defensive series by Sterling Harvey, David Pearson, uh, junior 190 pounder, making the initial hit. So the Red Raiders will be forced to punt. They haven't had to do that a whole lot this season. They have a good punter, number 87, Bill Nevis. Look out, look out, look out. on this Red Raider team, so good first series defensively for Sterling. Good snap, Nevis gets it off, nice punt. And uh, could be Paul's bar's ball. Boy, the ball is loose. Was there. The ball was touched by a Sterling player from our view. I don't know, yeah. I'm not sure there was an official close enough to see it. Paul's bar jumped on it and said it's our football. Well, that would be a big turnover. Sterling was fortunate there, Mike, because there was some real uh, inattentive on the re receiving team of Sterling. They really didn't know where the ball was, and that's uh, a dangerous situation. The ball can get loose back there, and it was momentarily. So Sterling takes over at his own 35-yard line. Their first series, 9.31 to play. Scoreless first period. Paul's were unable to move the ball in its first possession. David Santana operating the offense for the Knights, they operate also out of the power eye formation. 
Movement on the right side, that'll be a dead ball foul. It looked like Pauls were removed, perhaps drawn. You hate to see that early in a ball game. You tell your team, Bob, to get used to the quarterback count first. You cannot be over anxious. You don't know exactly what kind of cadence he uses, whether it's a rhythmic count or a non-rhythmic count. Dead ball whether foul. Kreutzman, Paul's ball, repeat first down. Whether or not he barks out the third number more than he does on the first two, you've just got to be within yourself early, used to the rhythm, the same as that offensive line has to on the uh, side with the football. Nick Grary making the call, the referee, former athletic director at Overbrook Regional High School. Second, or first down and five after the five yard penalty. And the pitch to Jones. Jones, not much doing. Pick up of only about a yard. It'll be second down and four. Mike Bell making the tackle for the Red Raiders. Well, uh, Paul's bar out in the familiar five-man front with a couple of interior linebackers and then the, the corners on what amounts to a 5-4 depending on the setup from Sterling, whether they split as they do now, the wide receiver to the far side will loosen in the direction of the split. John Fox, the alternate tailback in the game now. He gets the pitch, cutting it back inside. The one tackle, another one, good run by Fox. He gets the first, first down of the football game. Advancing the ball to the 48, where Sterling will have a first down and 10. Fox is listed at 5'10", but he looks bigger than that. He's one of those lanky kind of guys at 180, 185 pounds and found the hole beautifully. And they had come with a wing back to this side, which gave them an additional uh, ability to, to slide the defense from Paulsburg wider. Corner had to loosen and respect the wing, and then they were able to get man-on-man -man blocking as a result of it. First and 10, the ball at the 48-yard line. Jones with the carry. He is drilled by Dust Dustin Briscoe of the Red Raiders. Gets it across midfield to about the 49-yard line. Pickup of two, second down and eight. Gallagher using the wing effectively. This time he put him on the same side as the split receiver. He has alternated that. On occasion, he has come with the slot opposite split. This time he goes with the split, and one more time, since the defense to give them the man the man. Briscoe, however, responded well, filling the hole from the middle linebacking position. Second and eight, the ball just past midfield. And the fullback, Joe Miller, gets the call, 204 pounder. Gets a couple of yards to the 47. It'll be third down and six Davis with the tackle for the Red Raiders. Quick trap that time inside, but the defensive line from Paulsburg closed it down. They felt the pressure and just went to the knee and rolled back to the inside to fight off that trap block and hold the hole as tight as possible to allow the linebackers to get there. They use some motion with Fox, and Tanner to throw. Left-handed throw, and it is dropped. It was a catchable ball, but Jay Brook unable to hang on, and it'll be fourth down and six, and now Sterling in a punting situation. That book name very familiar, of course, to Woodworks fans. Cousins to the Brook family. Uh, played football at Woodbury for a number of years, very effectively. Interesting offense on that movement that time as they flooded the zone to this side. You have not seen that from Sterling very frequently in the past. This is a new dimension to this club. A lot of people uh, this area were frustrated by the unwillingness of the coach to throw the football, not this year. Brian Prince with the punt, and it is off the body of the uh, one of the men on this Sterling punt team, Kevin Henry. Today's game brought to you by Gloucester County College, where you can move toward your career through quality programs, a top-notch faculty, and at a tuition rate that's truly affordable. For more information, call 468-5000, extension 221 for information. Gloucester County College. Officials conferring with the Paulsboro captains. There's a penalty marker down at about the 20 line. Uh, the spot at the 21, where the Red Raiders have a first down and 10. Let's see what this call is going to be. In any event, they tried their uh, power offense in the opening time they had the football, Bob, trying to... We have interference by the blue team to catch the ball. We'll go back previous spot, 15 yards, and kick over. All right, even though that was accidental, 
Bob, with the uh, ball hitting the helmet of the Sterling player, Kevin Henry, it is ruled that it was interference, interfering with the opportunity to catch the football, and that's a biggie. 15 yards, as Guerrero indicates. It was against it. And they will move it back and force them to punt it again. As I was saying, when they get the football back, Bob, they tried the power inside the tackles last time they had the football. I think this time around, when they get it, you're going to see them see what uh, uh, Kevin Harvey can do with the option situation. Harvey, by the way, is one of the deep men for Paulsburg, along with Sam Swanson and Harvey, as we saw in the Woodburg game, very dangerous on punt return. So. Sterling now will have to punt this one from the 32-yard line. Paulsboro should emerge from this with better field position. 6.29 to play first period. Each team has had the ball one time. Sterling with one first down. Paulsboro looking for its first. Brian Prince again will do the punting for the Knights. Oh, I'll tell you what, uh, out on the field, some of the uh, coaches from Sterling are really upset. And they held up play as they uh, come back and they try to figure out where the football should be. <laughs> they, uh, they, they marked it a little too far. They marked it from where the, the first series, the uh, first down series had begun. But now, five, oh, they're 10, 15, looks like a 19 yard penalty wow. instead of a 15. Uh, you'd think they'd use the five yard markers, which would have come up with 15 since the ball apparently was marked at the 50 for the snap. Seems to me, if you subtract 15 from 50, it puts it at the 35. And Gallagher says, can't you guys count? Now they have it right. Well, uh, they, they may or may not have it right. In any event, uh, Sterling is going to pick up an additional five to seven yards out of it. They'll finally mark it where, at the 38? So Prince again, back to punt from the 38 with Harvey and Swanson, the deep tandem for the Red Raiders. Right. They may never get this playoff, Mike. Mm. <laughs> now the Paulsburg coaching staff apparently had a different count. You know, both teams use clipboards to chart every play, and one and part of the thing on it is where the play is beginning from. So both of them were consulting it and saying, well, 15 yards from point X should be point Y. And the argument out there is uh, whether or not they're even talking about point X or Y. I mean, we're, we're, we're not sure how you can have this much confusion. They still don't have it figured out. <laughs> yeah, Guerrero says, let's do it. Prince to punt. Swanson, Harvey deep for Paulsboro. Good snap, and a bad punt off the side of the foot by Prince, and again, it hits number 50, and again, same thing. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Kevin Henry, again, is hit by the football. You can't blame that before. Him. Can you blame it on him? I mean, he's coming downfield. He, uh, supposed to, Bob, the name of the game of the special team. First, you have to get down so many yards. We have Vance again to catch a fair catch. Is this bizarre Bye, or is this bizarre? We'll go back 15 yards from the previous spot. Kick over. Let's see if they get it right now where they put it. Watch the punt. It is not a good one off of the foot of Brian Prince. Kevin Henry, who's getting down 10-15, right there on the right, hits him again. He says, oh, no, not one more time, number 50. How can he get hit twice in two plays? Uh. I think he could try it if they came out here in practice and tried it over and over again. How long would it take before that occurred? Now he's going to punt it from the 22. This is bizarre. Oh. All right. Gets it off this time. Oh, watch this. Oh, what a mistake. What a mistake. Oh, my goodness. Oh. And Sterling on the turnover winds up with the football at the polls for a 45-yard line. Swanson catch the ball on the dead run. Mike, you could see that coming. Absolutely. It, it uh, violated every rule on, on a punt receiver. There's no way on that low liner that you're going to run up under it. We'll take a look at it again. So all this works to Sterling's benefit. The third punt. This time, Prince gets it off, and more importantly, Henry stays out of the way. But look at Swanson coming up. He was by it before uh, uh, not even anywhere close to being able to handle it. 
Fox as we get back to live action with a game of about two yards to the 43. It'll be second down and eight in a strange first period. 5-18 to play, still no score, but a little bit of everything in this game. Paulsboro unbeaten, unscored upon. The throw, the left-handed throw. The ball is tipped, the ball is loose, and Paulsboro intercepts it. Good defensive reaction that time as the ball was knocked up in the air. And the interception by Tony Anthony Gilcrest, number 68, comes up with the football. Good reaction. By the way, it was super faking by the uh, quarterback from Sterling. It came back and did the double fake on the line. And Santana, actually, because of the faking, didn't get back deep enough. There it is. And uh, Boy, is Gilcrest says, where's the football? We'll take it. So <laughs> turnovers on two successive plays. Ball at the 46-yard line of Paulsboro. The Red Raiders with the first down and 10, unable to move the ball first time they had it. They hand off to Davis. Davis, some good running room, and he pounds off of a couple of would-be tacklers. Good yardage inside Sterling territory. Great hit. Jay Brook with the first hit for Sterling. Gain of seven by Davis. It's second down and... In that formation, Bob, it looked to me like they could get to the corner on the option. I've got to believe that they're going to say to Jenkins, we've got to find out quickly. Gallagher standing on the sideline has to think that's going to occur also. They know it's a matter of time before they get into this option series. They set it up first with the initial play that ultimately becomes the first fake on the option. The pitch to Jenkins. Jenkins, good tackle, but he might have the first ball to, down. The ball is loose again but I believe the play was called dead. Robert Mann making the tackle for Sterling. Jenkins injured Paulsboro player down at about the 42, 43 yard line. Injury is a part of the game, unfortunately, and it does not look good for them to continue to lose football players. We'll take time out from Sterling, no score. Lost Bob out there right now temporarily, at least for Paulsburg. That is James Davis, the starting fullback, limped off under his own power, however. We expect to see him back. First down and 10 for the Raiders, their first to the ball game. Jenkins, he is thrilled at the line of scrimmage. Boy, the Sterling team is really hit. Devin Carter leading the tacklers. Dave Pearson also in on the play, along with Ryan Barickian. I've been thinking it's been a while since the Paulsburg backs have been stung the way have they have been early here in this game by the Sterling defense. Just super hitting. And you see the Paulsburg, when's the last time you saw Paulsburg backs hit, stunned, stopped, and maybe stepped backwards? Not too often. Ball at the 44-yard line, second down and 10. Davis back in the game at fullback. Harvey with the option, cuts it back. Oh boy, he's so dangerous. Pretty good run, but uh, he had one man to beat, Mike. I think that's the play they're going to have to run, as I pointed out earlier, in order to perhaps loosen the, the, the linebackers and make them respect the possibility of Harvey getting to the corner and turning it. That's going to make the inside game more effective. Uh, now, you can take a look at what they did early, and they were having some difficulty, but hey, that's Glenn Howard and the option series. It really doesn't matter that much if you get one, two, or three yards. What you're doing is making everybody inside respect their zone, their area, so that you can get out on one-on-one -on -one play with the option. Jenkins with the carry. Jenkins down the sideline, knocked out of bounds. Touchdown saving tackle by Jay Brook. But a nice run by, and penalty marker is down. This might bring this play back. Sterling fans think so. I'll tell you what, there was a block thrown by Davis that was just super on that play. Listen to Grary. Holden, Paul's ball, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down. So that really changes the play. Jenkins had the first down. Now it's going to be third down and long for the Raiders and a probable passing down for Harvey, who incidentally got seven yards in the previous play. Yeah. 
So the spot at the 46 yard line, third down and 12. Two minutes, three seconds to play first period. These two defensive Titans locked in a scoreless tie in the first period, battling for first place in the Colonial Conference. Double slot to the far side, pulling everybody out. Bob, be great time to throw a screen pass to that way. Harvey to throw, Dutchman dumps it. It's tipped and it's intercepted. It was tipped by number 50, Kevin Henry, who's tipping the football everywhere he goes, isn't he? This time and he it, did it on purpose, however, and it worked his third advantage. Intercepted by Brian Prince, incidentally. They did come with the screen, but they came to the short side. They expected rotation, and they did not get the rotation that they thought they would have with the double slot to the right side. They said, we'll move everybody in that direction, we'll come back, then we'll set the screen to the short side. But good defensive teams do their job. They remained home and uh, came up with the interception. Nothing doing here. The run by Joe Miller and Briscoe, Dustin Briscoe, veteran linebacker for the Raiders on the great season, makes the tackle. No gain, second down and 10. So. Kind of a sloppy, strange first quarter, right? Well, it's sloppy, it's strange, except from one thing, it is not strange. Good football team, coaches will tell you, are anchored by the defense. No matter what the scores look like, how many points they score, it's defense. Both these teams are bruisers. They've been pounding the backs on each opposing team so far. Santana rolling right, penalty markers down. Santana has some room, Santana maneuvering for the first down, but let's see the way this penalty goes. Now there's an injured Paulsborough player, Mike Bell, back at about the 44, but he's up, he seems to be okay. And it looks like this one may come back. Penalties, interceptions, fumbles. And penalties are the other thing you expect there. Early in the season when a couple of teams like this get together, the anticipation all week long has been so big, the buildup. Motion, Sterling, halfback. Repeat, first down, five-yard penalty, second down. So the first down carry by Santana wiped out on the penalty. 45. Now what happens is that anticipation that we talked about with the adrenaline flow that occurs with young guys at the high school level, that's the sign of it. The halfback just jumps a little quick. He wants to get out there and get moving and try to get something uh, special ha to happen. Instead, the thing that special happens is a penalty flag and it brings it back for them, gives them that second and about 15. Final minute of the first period, second down and 15 for the Knights. Santana rolling left again. Bell chasing him, Bell can't get him. Santana with a good run, gets the five back plus a couple more to near midfield. Well, Bell is gonna have to do a better job on that corner wearing number seven over there. He's gonna to have to turn it back inside. And that means that when he has outside leverage responsibility, he will he will take on the blockers, but he'll take on the blockers with the inside shoulder. If he takes it on with the outside, the right shoulder playing on the right side, that allows everybody to get by him, even though he is doing his job of handling blockers. End of one quarter from Sterling Regional High School. Matchup of the unbeatens in the Colonial. No score, Sterling and Paulsboro. Second quarter, second quarter football coming from Sterling Regional. These teams locked up in a scoreless tie. Paulsboro and Sterling and Bob, uh, two teams coming in. What I've seen in that first period of play is super hitting by both defenses. It has been defense so far, coupled with the fact that each of the teams has made a number of errors that has uh, uh, taken away from any momentum building that they would hope to, to have happen. Like these teams have now played 26 quarters between them in the football season, and they've given up between them a total of two touchdowns. So that gives you some indication of just how potent these defensive units are. Sterling will have a third down and seven to commence the second period. Uh, the ball just shy of midfield at the Sterling 49-yard line. 
Well, they had some problems. Jenkins with his helmet had to go off to the side. He will be replaced by Clarence Harvey, wearing number 10. Fox the motion man. Santana rolling. Hits his man wide open down the sideline. Finally knocked out of bounds, but a nice reception by Jay Brook for the first down and a lot more way down to the Paulsburg 34-yard line. Well designed. One more time. They continue to flood the zone. Watch it here as Santana will sprint in that direction. And then watch the block after the catch is made. Watch the block by Fox. Right, well, mm -hmm. I don't know how good a block it was. Huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe even a clip. First down and 10 at the 34-yard line. The handoff to Miller. Miller gets a couple down to about the 31-yard line. Since what I sense, Bob, as I pointed out with Ballsburg and the probable need in my mind for them to get to the outside with either the the pitches on the power sweep or the option. I have a sense that this game is not going to be won from tackle to tackle, but it's going to be won on the corners and outside or in the air. Miller got two. It's second down and eight. Santana keeps it. Santana gets to the corner. One man to beat. Beats him, but pulled down from behind by... Kevin Chu saving the touchdown, but a big first down carry nonetheless for Santana. Gets the ball all the way down to the 15-yard line with a first down and 10. Much more multidimensional football team at Sterling than we've seen in the past years. I indicated you got to get to the outside. They freeze everybody inside with this good fake, and then Santana says, all right, it's only going to be one-on-one. Briscoe can't get me coming from the middle linebacker spot. Therefore, I'll take the 10, 12, 15 yards downfield. So Sterling with the most serious threat of the football game. They're at the 15-yard line, first down and 10. The handoff straight ahead to Miller. Not a whole lot doing in there. Paul's were with a host of tackles. Davis, who's having a big year, in on the play. Mike Bell also in there. Last getting up from the bottom of the pack is uh, Brian Peck. A lot of room to the right side now as the ball's on the left hash mark. The only thing that mitigates against that is the fact that Santana being a left-handed thrower, it's very difficult going to the right to throw that way, but with the situation the way it is, the need to get to the outside, I'd, I'd, be like, to, I'd like to either toss and go right or sprint with the quarterback to the right. Second and nine, Santana to throw. He is drilled, penalty markers down. They completed pass to Burke, who's knocked out of, or excuse me, Fox, who's knocked out of bounds at about the 10, but there is a Penalty flag. Yeah, I think number five, Downey, going downfield may have been held up. And uh, he's not the one the ball was thrown to, but it looked to me like the defensive back thinking he was going to be beaten, held him, and that's going to be the call, I believe. He'll talk this one over. It really can't be an interference. It would have to be a defensive hold, as I see it. Let's see how Nick Guerrero, uh comes up with a determination of what it is. Holding, close ball, half the distance to the goal, third down. And Mike Downey uh, did his best to convince the official of it too, because as he was grabbed going by the second, defender, he just yelled and correction. looked in the direction of the judge back there who threw the flag. So they're in great shape down here. So it'll be second down and one, the ball at the six yard line. And the Raider defense, which has not given up a point all season long, really being tested here. Sterling fans making a lot of noise. And the handoff in, into the end zone. He's, a, he's in, touchdown for Cliff Jones. Cliff Jones, a junior running back with the first points of the season scored against the Bonnet Pauls for a defense. And Sterling, late penalty, it'll be a dead ball. The touchdown will count. I think they've got some taunting or something. Bob, they set up with a uh, formation strong to the right side and came back to the left side from the power eye and just struggles in no problem finding the end zone. When he saw that, he said, I'm leaning forward. I'm coming down in the 
six-point territory, but I think the flag is some kind of taunt or something of that nature. Dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike, against Sterling, 15 yards from the three-yard line, five for kick. Yeah, they uh, they were getting in the face of Paulsburg uh, quite a bit after the game. Touchdown does Touchdown count. Touchdown is good. So Sterling has jumped on top six to nothing. But this is going to make for a long extra point. David Pearson does the placement work for Sterling, but this is going to become a long kick for the PAT if they choose to do. He's going to tee it up at the 25. We'll make it a 35-yard extra point try. Gallagher wants to know from Guerrero what in the world went on. They bring him over again. There have been more conferences between the coaches and the officiating staff today in the early going than we ever see in a whole football game. This will be quite a kick if they kick it, huh? 35-yarder attempted by David Pearson. Good snap and hold. Yes. And he gets a good kick off. It's good. A 35-yard extra point kick by Pearson. <laughs> and Sterling leads it into nothing. Well, now we know why they kicked it, huh? We know that he, he thought it was there. Well, today's game brought to you by Dowdy's Fine Furniture with home and office furniture with over 24 desk styles in stock. In-store or in-home decorating service available. Complete bedding department. Free delivery within a 50-mile radius with a minimum purchase of $300. Major credit cards accepted and other financing available. Dowdy's Fine Furniture of Clayton open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 to 9, Wednesday, 11 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 5. Well, the Red Raiders in the uncustomary position of having to come from behind in this football game as the cheerleaders and the Silver Knight mascot celebrate. Kevin Jenkins deep along with Sam Swanson for the Red Raiders. Chris Sterling with an impressive drive, capped by Cliff Jones's five-yarder, six-yarder. Pearson will kick it off. It is test time for Paulsboro. 9.42 to play in the first half. High, short kick, Jenkins at the 22. Oh, my. Oh, boy, is he ever hit. He is absolutely drilled by number 43, Robert. Man, what a hit, man. Put on Jenkins. Well, we've talked about the hitting and the fact that the Paulsburg backs are being stunned, and I think that's the only way to define it. They are not used to this kind of hit. Man comes down. First, they say we're going to kick it over towards the right. They do that to get the ball in the hands of Jenkins. Gets it. Watch the stop by man. Bang. You're going nowhere but backwards. Big leg hit by man. Jenkins, Davis, the back's behind Harvey. First down and 10 for the Raiders. Davis gets a couple of yards up to about the 35-yard line. Give him four, second down and six. So Sterling, the first team to score against Ballsboro this season. And that's the reason I talk about a test, Bob. Not only have they gone through three games undefeated, which is going to suggest to them they're a super football team, but the fact that they went without being scored on, now they not only get scored on, but find themselves behind. Pitch to Jenkins. Hey, little trickery, but he slips and falls. Oh, wow, there was some room over there, Mike, for for number 22, Sam Swanson on the reverse, and it was set up very nicely, but Swanson simply slipped and fell. That was one of the latest developing reverses you're ever going to see, and there was on the other side a wall of five Paulsboro blockers waiting. If he could have got behind him, he had big yardage. But he lost six back to the 30. It's third down and 12. Paulsboro with just one first down in the first half. Harvey back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. And he's going nowhere. They still haven't tackled, but the play was called dead. The difference in the football game, Mike, so far, obviously the Sterling defense. Absolutely. They're covering their positions. They're holding their zones. They're not getting caught where they don't belong. And then they're delivering the blow and delivering a message. The Paulsboro runners 
not only are not getting much, they are getting hit. Nevis, excellent punter for Paulsborough, back at about his own 12-yard line. Jay Book, the deep man for Sterling. Nevis gets a good snap. Gets off a great punt by Nevis. Outstanding punt. Brooke taking it at the 32-yard line. Looking for some blockers. Nice coverage by the Raiders as Steve Burick, a sophomore, got down there. Today's game brought to you by Big Marty Southwood Shopping Center in Woodbury. At Big Marty's, they'd like to kick off the fall football season with a touchdown sale. Remnants from $59. Carpet completely installed from $9.95 a yard. Stop in today, Big Marty Southwood Shopping Center in Woodbury. 24-hour installation, all credit cards accepted, financing available. Big Marty really does sell carpet cheaper. Sterling starts from its own 39-yard line. Knights lead it 7-0. And off to Miller. And Miller gets a couple across the 40 yard line. Sterling wanted to dominate possession time. They've done that here in the first half. Gain of three on the play, second down and seven for the Knights with six minutes, 35 play in the half. Fox, Miller, the backs behind Santana, the South Pole quarterback. Santana keeps the ball. A nice bit of twisting and turning for extra yardage before Anthony Gilchrist finally tackles Santana, but Santana got out of two tackles and made a nice gain to the 47-yard line where it'll be third down and two. We've seen him run that play four times now, Bob. What they're finding out, if you'll watch, is that once the fake is made, the defense closes down inside and they leave nobody with the outside responsibility. Look, there's no defender there until the corner has to come up. That's Kevin Jenkins, and he is handled by Santana's fake. So they apparently, from the scouting report, said, look, this is an over-aggressive front defense. They're lining up in the 5-2, and if we can split like we're doing with the wide man, we will take the corner out of the play. Fox with the carry, and Fox with the first down across midfield to the 49, as Briscoe makes the tackle. Good trap coming back to the inside. Used to be called that play back in the 50s and 60s, the Syracuse Scissors, where they bring the wing back back on the trap play inside. And you get everybody flowing the other way. Gives time for the guard to pull, make the trap, and usually you don't worry about the linebackers. Briscoe, however, covered his position well in the middle linebacking spot and made the tackle. Ball at the 49 of Paulsburg with a first down and 10. Straight ahead. Miller going nowhere as Brian Peck, fine sophomore, makes the tackle. This player we're going to be hearing a lot more about. Once again, inside, both ways, not much doing. A yard, two yards, maybe three at the most. The yardage today being found on the corners, outside, and with, in Sterling's case, a couple of times in the air. Miller got two to the 47, second down and eight for the Knights. Straight. Santana with a good fake, keeps the football. Santana with the first down. Santana still on his feet, and a great effort by Santana to the 30-yard line for a first down. That was a pickup of 19 yards by Santana. Mike coming into the ball game in the battle of the quarterbacks. Uh, the freshman for Paulsburg, Harvey, the more heralded of the two, but young Mr. Santana putting on quite a first-half show. Yeah, he's the beneficiary of whoever made up this game plan for Sterling because they are discovering that on the wide out uh, formation that Paulsburg goes man to man and just ignores apparently at least to this point any run responsibility. They are putting so much responsibility on the defensive ends and so far they have been taking the fake Santana a free run into the corner territory. Fox good yardage for Fox across the 25 to the 24, six yard gain for John Fox and uh, their offense operating on all cylinders right now, triggered by Santana, the quarterback. Second down and four to 24 with 3.40 to go. Mike, they're, they're just dominating possession time. They're moving the football and that is precisely the game plan for Sterling. 
All right, now they have the running room to the left side. They set the formation to the right. Well, previously, they had coming back the other way, but they'll go with the power in the direction of the wing back and the tight end. Fox close to a first down. They've been very hard to figure out, Bob, in terms of any tendency. The only tendency is that they will go a couple of times in the line and then they'll try to get to the outside. But you cannot tell yet by the formation exactly which way they're going. Makes it very difficult for the defensive coordinator when he gets ready of time to make adjustments. Third and one at the 21. Box again, box first down. Four more downs coming up for Sterling. Swanson makes the hit. John Fox appears to have a, a first down for Sterling. The ball at the 19-yard line, and Sterling has been in control of this football game, leading only 7 to nothing. but uh, they have had the upper hand both offensively and defensively. Back in the power eye, the pitch to the touchdown maker, Jones. Jones with some good room, tripped up, or he might have gone. Tripped up on a good tackle by Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins was the responsibility of number five, Mike Downey. Remember, he was the split man. We told you that the corners had gone out, man them. That put Downey on Jenkins. He had a shoulder into him, but did not have enough to hold him, and therefore he's able to come back and get the uh, tackle. But they do pick up the big six, seven yards on it. There is where it is open, on the outside. And there you can see Jenkins coming off the block of number five, Downey. Nice camera work. We'll take time out from Sterling. It's Sterling seven, Paulsboro nothing. Tackle finally hammered down at about the three. Fallsboro needs a big defensive stand here. Derek Haney in on the tackle for the Red Raiders, along with Tom Richardson, honored by the Touchdown Club this week. And Richardson certainly deserved that. What a great defense effort he had. Eight, touch, or eight tackles and six assists last week. That's eight solo tackles. Hardly ever happened in any football game. Ball at the three-yard line, second and goal. Minute 30 to play in the first half. Fox trying to bully his way into the end zone. He's close. Apparently not in. Where they go forward, don't they? They run north and south, these Sterling backs. They really get that shoulder down, and they've got some nice size. I like Fox. Uh, we pointed out earlier, it doesn't. Uh, he looks bigger than he is, 5'10", 187 pounds. But very, very angular, and yet he's the power to get that shoulder down and maintain good balance. Third and goal, the ball inside the one-yard line. Power eye, left tackle. There it is. Fox into the end zone for the touchdown. John Fox from the one. The touchdown coming with 41 seconds to go and a half, and Sterling. Jumped out to a 13 to nothing lead over the undefeated Paulsville Red Raiders. All right, we'll watch it here. 
And watch how low to the ground the backs are. Everybody moving forward off the line, and two blockers coming in front of Fox. And then look how he's down there, powers himself in. He gets the touchdown. Sterling having the better of it here so far today. Pearson, a little shorter extra point try this time. And again, he's true. And it's 14 0 Sterling. And Mike, there's only 41 seconds to go in the half. Paulsburg just isn't getting the football. Today's game brought to you by Dowdy's Fine Furniture of Clayton. It is Dowdy's proud tradition of quality, service, and value that has been kept alive for over 46 years with one of Southern New Jersey's largest, most beautiful home furnishing showrooms. 43,000 square feet of showroom with over 150 fully decorated and accessorized vanettes. Dowdy's Fine Furniture of Clayton open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 to 9, Wednesday, 11 to 5, Saturday, 9 to 5. Now, Paulsboro is going to have a lot to talk about in the locker room, Bob, at halftime. They have to, unfortunately for the Red Raiders, they've got to make uh, adjustments both ways, offensively and defensively. They haven't gotten anything gone to speak of offensively and defensively. A great, great offensive game plan has hurt Paulsboro. They have taken a look at them, apparently, Sterling, and said, we think we know what we have to do, and they've been doing it. Into the line, into the line, and get to the corner. Pearson with the kickoff. Same type of short kick taken at the 35-yard line. And pretty good job by number 33, Tyrone Bradshaw, getting falls for a good field position at the 40, but only 33 seconds to go in the half, and it'll be uh, interesting to see how Coach Glenn Howard plays this situation. Does he content to win the locker room? Uh, down 14 nothing to try to put it up, maybe get seven back in this final 33 seconds. Well, disaster would strike, wouldn't it, if they threw the ball into the flat somewhere and yeah. it got picked off by this very, very strong defense of Sterling. So you want your young quarterback, if he is going to throw, not to throw to the corners. Harvey back to throw. Harvey over shoots his intended receiver on the sideline. Charlie Kidd, the intended receiver. So second down in for the Red Raiders. Paulsburg with one first down in the first half. This one. 3-0 and oh football team, dominant football team, no problem with any opponent to this point, and have one first down. That talks about the dominance, doesn't it, of Sterling in this football game to this point. Boy, they've been, they've been popping. Excellent defensive effort by the Knights. Second down and 10, seven seconds to go. Might be the final play of the first half. Don't throw it into the corners. Harvey. Breaks loose, still on his feet. A couple of yards, but that'll do it for the first half. Battle of unbeaten at Sterling. First half won by the host Knights. They lead calls for a 14 to nothing. We'll be back at the second half after this. Two undefeated football teams came into today's contest. We expected a classic confrontation. What we've gotten has been domination by the offense and defense of Sterling Regional. Mike Linder along with Bob Schrag. It has been Bob all Sterling to this point. 14 to nothing, they're up as we start the second half. They controlled the football. They're gonna get it to start the second half. Excellent kickoff by Nevis right through the end zone. So Sterling will start from the 20 yard line. And you know, they, I think the Paulsbury defense needs to make something happen early, Mike. The last thing they want to see now is a long drive by Sterling. Football coach is, of course, so important in so many, many ways. But when it comes to game day, maybe the most important thing they are called upon to do is to make halftime adjustments. In my mind, Paulsburg was being beaten by the 5-2 defense they were sitting in that uh, was being countered so beautifully by the offensive game plan of Sterling. I suggested I thought they should go to some kind of a six-man front. Let's see if they make any kind of adjustment. They're still in that 5-2. where they've been running into off-tackle a couple times, then faking there, and that's the way they've been uh, starting. They fake on about the second or third play, and then Santana, the outstanding quarterback so far today, has been keeping the ball, getting to the outside, and the corners have had responsibility, man-on-man -on, -man on split receivers, on wide men, have not been able to get off the block and get up and stop Santana at the corners. Joe Miller got one yard on the first carry to the 21, second down and nine for the Knights. 
David Santana, the quarterback, had an excellent first half. Santana keeping the football. He's been dangerous on this play, but he is sandwiched this time. Good job on the corner by the Red Raiders. A lot of players over there in on that tackle. Clarence Harvey, Jenkins was there. And a gain of three on the play to the 24. Third down and six, and the Raiders need it here. You know, they adjusted that time by coming quickly from the defense's secondary. That could hurt you if he pulled up on that and then threw the football. Jones, oh, oh. it's his own man, wow. Yeah. Jones runs into his own man, number 66, Kevin Weston, and the Knights are gonna be forced to punt. And it was because of number 78, Matt Davis, who just took that blocker and threw him back into the backfield and right into the running back. You'll watch this. Watch 78 come along, bang, just bangs the uh, blocker right into the running back. Brian Prince punting. Paulsbury should get good field position here. Swanson, Harvey, the deep men for the Raiders. But almost blocked. And not a very good punt by Prince, but he does get a, a good bounce. So Paulsbury is gonna have an opportunity here on their first possession of the half to start from the 48-yard line of Sterling. Today's game brought to you by Gloucester County College, where lifelong learning enables you to improve your present career or move into a bright new one. Programs are offered on our 270 main campus in Deptford and at our new Pure Land Center at exit 10 of Route 295. Call 467-8535 for lifelong learning information or call 468-5000, extension 221 for general information, Gloucester County College. Davis not in at fullback starting the second half. Eric DePietro is in his spot. Jenkins still at tailback. Jenkins with the carry. Jenkins sliding off one would-be tackle that only gets a yard or two. Brian Prince with the first hit for Sterling, and that Sterling defense just had a magnificent first half. Two-yard pickup, second down and eight. And we'll see what kind of changes are made offensively in the game plan by the Paulsboro coaches in the locker room. One was the removal of Davis from the backfield. Remember, he had banged up a couple of times in the first half. We're not sure if that's why he isn't in there, if they feel they want to get an added dimension with his substitute. So they're missing now both Diggs and Davis. Harvey to throw, getting good protection. Guns it, and it's caught nicely by Charlie Kidd for the first down, and the young freshman showing that rifle arm. He hadn't had to throw a whole lot in the first three games, but he is now 12 for 19 on the season. That's not bad. First down to the 31, pickup on the play of 14 yards. What I liked about him was how quickly he got back, sat up, stood there, saw his receiver, and delivered the football. Did not take a look at the on-rushing defense. You gotta feel that. You can't look at it as a quarterback. You gotta feel it, know when to get rid of it. Harvey, option left with the pitch to Jenkins. Jenkins slips a tackle, still on his feet. Good second effort by Kevin Jenkins, who's replacing the starter, Jason Diggs, today. Diggs out with an injury. All right, so far what we've seen adjustment-wise is opening the game up more offensively, throwing the ball and going with the option play to the outside. Apparently they said, hey, this interior line of Sterling is just standing us up, handling our blockers, and at the point of attack, tackle to tackle, we're not getting much, so let's see what we can do. Throwing the ball, loosen them a little bit, and then run the option. Five-yard gain by Jenkins at second and five. Harvey fires it over the middle, completely to Nevis. Nevis still on his feet. He has a first down. Paulsburg has opened it up to start the second half, and by far their most impressive possession of the football game. Important for them here to try and get into that end zone, get that score, and psychologically we give them such a lift. Good fake here by Harvey. Remember, this is the play that's run off the option that he ran on the previous play. You fake, then you step like you're gonna come down the line the option, instead come back, read the tight end as soon as he's open, give it to Nevis as they do there. Finally, he's handled uh, by Jay Brook with a strong tackle. 13, first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Back split behind Harvey. Harvey to throw again, fires it over the middle, completed! Touchdown, touchdown pass from Harvey to Charlie Kidd for 13 yards and with 7.44 to play in the third period. Paulsboro right back in this football game. Well, I hadn't seen Kevin Harvey except on tape before this ball game. I've been waiting to see him take control, become the dominant force. He did it on that drive. 
two, three super passes and an outstanding run on the option that was Kevin Harvey, the 14-year-old freshman all the way. And Paulsburg has a timeout they have to call here. Watch this. Comes back looking immediately. It's nothing but an in pattern from the wide receiver. He split the two defenders with the pass, delivered it at the right moment. Bob, that one has to be thrown right away because you're going to have a linebacker dropping to cut the angle. You're going to have the deep uh, receiver, man on man, is going to take away the deep stuff. They'll deliver it between those two before the linebacker gets back. Harvey delivered it perfectly. You don't see that from many quarterbacks. You sure don't see it very frequently from a very young and relatively inexperienced quarterback. Well, during the timeout, gives us a chance to talk to you about Big Marty's. Big Marty Southwood Shopping Center store in Woodbury. They'd like to kick off this fall football season with a touchdown sale. Remnants from $59, carpet completely installed from $9.95 a square yard. Stop in today, Big Marty Southwood Shopping Center in Woodbury. 24-hour installation available. All credit cards accepted. Financing also available on site. Big Marty really does sell carpet cheaper. The only negative uh, connected to this touchdown is Pauls were forced to spend one of its timeouts. Now, Nevis will kick out of the hold of Charlie Kidd, the touchdown maker. This is a very important extra point. Good snap and hold, but a late uh, approach by Nevis. He nonetheless gets it. That's a betting to seven now. 7.44 to play in the third. The Raiders uh, in this battle of unbeatens right back in it. We'll take time out from uh, Sterling Regional. The Raiders back in it, trailing 14 to seven. Now we got a football game. Yeah, huh? got some excitement. I haven't yeah. seen this in years. Uh -huh. Got the fans into the game. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> We've got a football game at Sterling. 7.44 remaining to play in the third period. Paul's first strikes for their first score. 14 to seven, Bob. Nevis, another good, strong kick. Santana at the goal line. He stepped oh, in, he Bob. Stepped out. He stepped in, so it's back to the 20 yard line. So, uh, you know, uh, Mike, that's been a factor. Nevis' kicking has been a factor in this football game, both punting and kicking off, because of course he kicked it through the end zone on the first one. It set Sterling back to the 20. They couldn't emerge from there, and that enabled the Raiders to get good field position. Right, you're talking about two undefeated football teams. You don't stay undefeated Touch long back. if you don't have every 20. dimension of your game. You've got to have offense, got to have defense, got to have special teams, and special teams means usually kicking game both ways. They have it with Nevis. The Paulsburg defense did the job on the first possession by Sterling here in the second half. Let's see what happens on the second. The handoff to Fox, who had a good first half. Fox almost breaks into the player, tripped up by number nine, Charlie Kidd, the touchdown maker for the Raiders, or Fox might still be running. First time they've really been able to break it on that, and that may be because they have told the defensive ends at halftime, you've got to worry about that outside. So as a result, Fox gets to off tackle. The tackle was sealed back to the inside, and just coming from the outside is that kid to make that stop. Fox got 10 for the first down to the 30-yard line. Fox again, a little doing this time, couple over the right side. Yeah, it's a trap to the right side, waiting for the guard to get out there. Tim Delaney wearing number 64. Fox was outside the block. He never waited for the trap to set up. And as a result, picks up only the uh, one and a half to two yards. Second down and eight, the ball at the 32. Mike, while we were away on break, uh, the, crowds, the crowd really getting into the football game, something we don't see a whole lot of any more in, in scholastic football, but both the Sterling fans and the Paulsburg fans, after that Raider touchdown, uh, really vocalizing their feelings. Second down and eight. Fox with a good run. Across the 35 to the 37. They trapped back to the right side that time, coming back with the wing back on almost a counter trap play. And interestingly, went right to the place where you would have found Dustin Briscoe, number 51, the strong linebacker for Paulsborough, who had limped off on the prior play and was not in there, and they tried to take advantage of it. Briscoe was replaced by Tyrone Bradshaw, wearing number 33. Third down and two, the ball at the 38-yard line. 
Santana with the keeper, and Santana gets the first down with good second effort. He was so dangerous on that play in the first half. And that's what Sterling want to do is reestablish its offense. They maintain possession at the 42 with the first and 10. Charlie Kidd came up with a strong tackle. Not enough to deny the first down, but I think maybe enough to deliver a message to Santana that this half on the corners, they don't expect to give him free round field 5-7 before they close. That time, Kidd came quickly from the corner position, the same way on the opposite side, Clarence Harvey wearing 10 did. So what they're doing now is reading and releasing as soon as they see him, instead of waiting and protecting against pass. Fox gets a couple, close to the 45. What's happened, Bob? It's almost an inverted kind of defensive Fox responsibility. Generally, your corners have to make the read when they're with the split receivers. Remember in the first half, they were going so deep with the uh, wide receivers that they couldn't recover in time. What they've taken now is the two safeties and they pulled them up and they said, you will have the responsibility on the runs to the corner. You'll watch how Kidd and uh, Harvey become almost an inverted situation there to take away that Santana run. Second down and eight. And the ball is loose, Santana. Well, what a what penetration by Tucson. He was in on Santana before Santana knew what hit him. A great individual effort by Richardson. And it appeared that he was coming on a stunt from a linebacking spot the way he made the charge. Timed it perfectly. Was just coming to the neutral zone at the snap of the ball. And that makes it very, very difficult for any lineman to get their pads into him. It worked out perfectly, not only because of his charge, but because of the call that Sterling had made when Santana holding on to the football. A loss of five, back to the 40. Third down and 13. Brook set in motion. Don't flood the zone, Bob. Santana guns it, and it is off of Fox, the intended receiver. Sterling forced again into a punting situation with 3.51 to play third period. And Pauls were now trailing by only a touchdown, 14 to seven. Red Raiders needed that defensive stand. They come out strong offensively in that time. We're there even if, gentlemen, you just saw Jay Brook made the catch. He was not going to have the first down. Prins will do the punting deep. Harvey Swanson for Paulsburg back at about their own 27, 28 yard line. Remember the big fumble by Swanson before. He cannot afford to do that again. Prins, not much on this punt again. Very short punt, it'll be down at about the 41, so a net punt on the play. Mike of only 16 yards, giving Paulsburg great field position. So important, the exchange of punts that changed the entire field position situation with that great punt or a kickoff by Nevis and then followed here by a short punt, which puts uh, Paulsburg in such great field position at the 42, allows them to do anything they want with their offense because of where they are on the field. First and 10 for the Raiders at their own 42-yard line. There's Glenn Howard feeling a little bit better about things. Harvey, option left. Harvey, still on his feet. Harvey, down the left sideline, one man to beat. And he is knocked out of bounds after a great run, and there is that tremendous balance that we talk about with the freshman, Harvey. He almost broke it. And so he dangerous. It. He loves it. I talked in the first half. I didn't believe first they were going to do it. Tackle to tackle. They had to get to the corners, had to do it with the option, had to get Harvey into the offense. That is the way they've adjusted at halftime. They've come out and done it so far. Now he's got to stay within himself. He can't get too excited. This is what you worry about with the youth. He can't try and do it all himself. 38-yard run by Watch Harvey. This. Here it is. Boy, he's running it deep. Now he turns back in. As soon as he sees it, he has that quick first step. That's what did it. First and 10, the ball at the 21. Harvey with the option pitch. Oh, the ball loose. Jenkins does well just to hang on to it. That could have been disastrous. Now watch, we said it's a quick first last play, but here is the second, third effort. He's taken down, it appeared, by Ryan Barickian plus Fox, but he did it all on his own. And a good block downfield by uh, Kevin Jenkins gives him an additional five yards. Now, that last option, he was just stunted uh, by one of the defensive linemen who came in and took away his option uh, to really get wide. Kevin Henry, I'm sorry, check it. It was uh, Ken McCulligan who did such a good job on Harvey. Check his loss five. It's second down and 15, Harvey to throw, getting good protection. Fires it over the middle, it's completed. 
completed the kid who scored the first Raider touchdown. And again, Harvey right on target with a great throw to kid. He knows where his patterns are. He knows where his receivers are. He is not just dropping back and using his natural talent of being able to deliver the football. He reads it perfectly. Watch him get back quickly, Bob, which allows him a chance to get set and look for the receivers. He looks, he says, all right, curl it up in tight. Curl it up in tight. He does that exactly and hits Charlie Kidd, who ran an excellent pattern getting in front of the deep dropping defense. It is first and goal. The ball just inside the 10-yard line. Straight ahead with Jenkins. Jenkins bounces off a tackle. Jenkins gets three or four. It's going to be second down and goal for the Raiders. Minute 55 to play in the third period. The Raiders down 14 to nothing at halftime. Have gotten it back to 14-7. A chance to tie it here in the third. Went to the straight wishbone that time. Have not seen that out of many football teams the last couple of years. They may won't line up in the formation, but usually breaking it a little bit with one wing back or a slot man. That time they were in the straight wishbone. See if they go back to it here. They've got some kind of a four down situation planned in advance, and it's going to be out of this formation. Harvey run all the way. Harvey is hammered down inside the five. Kevin Harvey on Sterling Schieber. closes quickly. Stop they just Derek get into Harvey. those gaps defensively. And make this a pressurized situation. I'll tell you what, they've got to be thinking on the sideline now, Bob. If we don't get close enough to force ourselves to say we're going to try on fourth down, they've got to be thinking about the strong foot of Nevis and a possible field goal situation. That decision should be getting made right now on the sideline in the event they don't get into the end zone on this play. They got a third down and goal from the four yard line. Harvey keeps the ball. Breaks one tackle. Look, he is so hard to bring down. Prince had him at about the 10 yard line. Couldn't hang on to him. Harvey got loose, got it back to the five, but it's gonna be fourth and goal from the five. I go field goal, I don't care. It's 42 seconds to go. There's all kinds of time in this football game. You don't wanna play for a tie in any event. You want to try and get some points out of this drive. It's essential that you get something. I'd be thinking uh, field goal. I don't think they're going to do it. They're bringing the play in with Derek Haney. Fourth down and goal, 42 seconds to go. Of course, Mike, if they don't score, they've got Sterling pinned deep again and still a full quarter to play. I'm sprinting to the right side with Harvey, and I'm telling him, if they're not open, you try to struggle to the end zone. Fourth and goal, Harvey. Tries the corner end zone pass and just over the outstretched fingertips of Charlie Kidd. A good play defended by Bob Shelley and Sterling with a great defensive stop. They'll take over to their own five-yard line with 37 seconds to play third quarter. Surprising play, Bob, because it gives him but one option, and the option has to be thrown a long way out to the right side, and uh, while the receiver is open, it's just beyond the outstretched hands of Charlie Kidd. So Sterling holds, they take over at the five, but uh, they're not out of danger. They need a first down or two to get out of the shadow of their own goal. That's what the Fallsburg defense has to say. All right, we got field position exchange. Let's stop them down here, force them to punt from deep. We haven't been impressed with their punter to this point. And then we'll start over again from the 30 or 40 yard line. What's the big deal? Cliff Jones gets five big yards for the Knights to the 10 yard line, second down and five with 20 seconds to go in the third period. Well, let's see if they just let it run down. Remember, the wind is blowing into their face at this particular point. They may let it, let the quarter run out and get down the other end and have the wind at their back. Five seconds to go. Four, three, Second two, down, one. They will not get the playoff. That's Great football game at Sterling Regional High School as Sterling and Pauls for a battle for the Cornwall Championship. It's 14-7 Sterling, Sterling, but the Raiders battling back. Bob Shryack and Mike Lindner at Sterling, beginning of the fourth quarter. Fox with a good carry and should have the first down for Sterling and a late penalty marker thrown into the pile. Might be a face mask. Didn't look like a late hit to me, how about you? 
didn't appear to be, no. It's against Ballsboro. Now the resurgence of Fallsboro in this second half, it all through that third quarter, has really given us everything that was advertised, Bob. What we all anticipated, a real good, close football game that Sterling dominated the, the first foul. half. Fallsboro, 15-yard penalty. First Boy, that is a damage. Yes, penalty. it is, isn't it? Sterling, Sterling starts this drive from their own five-yard line, and with the first down and now the 15 tacked on for the unsportsmanlike call, they're all the way out to the 31. That's a big play. So momentarily out of danger and with four more downs. Real good high school football game. Fox with the carry, going nowhere. Maybe a yard as he runs into number nine, Charlie Kidd, who's had a big football game for the Raiders. One yard pickup, second down and nine. Lots of room now to the left side. Remember, they have, when they needed yardage, gone to Santana, fake into the line, let him keep the football. Pressure will be on the right, right halfback. So Kevin Jenkins and Clarence Harvey will be tested if Santana goes in that direction. Dylan Fox behind Santana. Fox again. Fox with some good running room and still on his feet as he is driven out of bounds. Charlie Kidd over there along with Gary Keeney. Fox is a bruiser, isn't he? Comes out of that backfield. Over that 87 pounder. Apparently fans getting into it. Santana, the quarterback, imploring the crowd to really get with it. Fox on that carry got six. It'll be third down and seven. The ball spotted at the 37. Big play for the Raider defense. They don't want to give Sterling four more downs. Oh, the ball is loose, and I believe Paulsboro has it number 58 with the cover on the fumble, Tom Richardson. And break for the Red Raiders. Fox just never made connections with Santana on that. And interestingly, Bob, on that defense, look, they go to a six-man front first time, and I think they may have confused the blocking patterns from uh, uh, for Sterling on that play. That didn't have anything to do with the fumble but it allowed Richardson, the extra man, to get in there and cover it. Ball big play, go to a big play right away, Bob. Some kind of play action pass. Do it when you hope that Sterling may be down just slightly as a result of that fumble. Davis still out of there, had not played this half. Harvey rolling right, run all the way, getting big pursuit, gets by one tackle. And I tell you, Harvey's working for his yards today, gets a couple, but Sterling really making him earn those yards. Yeah, you know, Mike, uh, everybody expected Paulsburg to come into this game with uh, Jason Diggs, outstanding veteran tailback, and James Davis, veteran fullback. They're now operating with a second team backfield unit, freshman quarterback, and they're still in the ball game. Uh, you don't usually see that kind of depth at a group one school. If there's any program around that does have it, though, always seem to have players waiting in the wings. That's Paulsburg. Second down and eight, the ball at the 35. Straight ahead, a little doing for Jenkins. Boy, he looked like he had a hole, but it closed quickly. There is some hitting going on out on this football field. They just banging away. Dave Pearson again, 91, just gets in there at the top of the pile that time, buries his shoulder into the ball carrier and says, hey, take this. Not Jenkins, his Jenkins hurt. Today's game brought to you by Dowdy's Fine Furniture with home and office furniture with over 24 desk styles in stock. In-store or in-home decorating service available. Complete bedding department, free delivery within a 50-mile radius with a minimum purchase of dollars. Major credit cards accepted and other financing available. Dowdy's Fine Furniture of Clayton, open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 to 9. Also open on Wednesday, 11 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 5. Jenkins okay, Mike, but they're going to play that's Jim Gallagher, head football coach at Sterling. Uh, 23rd year as a head coach in South Jersey, 110 wins, 83 losses, five ties. Third down and six. Harvey back to throw, getting good protection. Fires it, completed. 
Haney with the first down reception and additional yardage. And young man can throw the football. Mike, you appreciate that as a former quarterback yourself. I love the way he gets back, set, scans the field for his receivers, and then delivers it on the money. I mean, it is a sharply thrown ball. Again, watch how quickly he's back. No fooling around, no hesitant. Now set in the pocket. Five step drop, look, take a look. Now deliver it, bang, right in the numbers. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. Hubby to throw, guns it, oh! Almost picked off, that could have been disastrous. Almost picked off by number 12, Jared Hardware. Clarence Harvey that time. <laughs> Came close to Costin Falls, but ball delivered maybe a little too hard for him. Bounces up in the air and off his hands. And he's Ooh, on the money. Of relief on the far side. The money could have been six the other way with Derek Hardware, but he just could not find the handle. Second down and ten. Mr. Young Mr. Harvey really throwing the football. Back split behind Harvey with a second down and 10. Harvey fires it over the middle. It's completed the kid and another first down. What they're reading is the defensive bats are just giving them everything up in front of them and uh, Paulsburg credit them because the advantage of it. They're not forcing the issue, trying to get deep. They're saying, you want to play off us? We will take what you give us in front of us. And Sterling now with an injured player, Jay Brook, that could really hurt them. Again, watch Harvey as he gets back. He says, you want to give us everything short? We'll take it and I'll deliver it on the break. Hit kid. And see it between the linebacker and the defensive back. And then they uh, have a problem with this very, very important player, Jay Brook Hurt. We'll take time out from Sterling. It's a great football game. Paulsburg down by seven, but threatening. Key part of this football game is Jay Brook is up and off the sideline, fortunately under there. You sense, don't you, Bob, that Paul's Barra must get it in the end zone. First and goal at the six yard line. Harvey to throw again. Fires it over the middle, it's dropped. It's dropped. Nevis had the football and could not hang on or it was six points. Again, Harvey on the money, and second you know, down and goal. You know why Nevis was wide open? If we saw this one again, you'd see Harvey come back. He looks to the left. Everybody steps in that direction, and then bang, turns, knows where Nevis is, delivers the ball right on the numbers again, and Bill just unable to hold on. Oh, mark that one down as a big, big play. Fortunate for Sterling, unfortunate for Woodbury, or for uh, Paulsbury. 8.33 to play, fourth quarter, 14-7 Sterling, second and goal with the six, Harvey again to throw. Harvey, he'll take off with the football, breaks the tackle, gets it down to about the three. Third down and goal. By the fans getting a treat this afternoon. Just outstanding high school football game. And Paulsburg will take its second time out of the half. Today's game brought to you by Big Marty's. Big Marty's located in the Southwood Shopping Center in Woodbury. Big Marty's giving us a lot of specials because of this football season. They're selling us remnants from $59. They're offering carpet completely installed from $9.95 a square yard. Stop in today, stop in during the week, but stop in the Big Marty's Southwood Shopping Center store in Woodbury. 24-hour installation. We'll get there in a hurry. We'll get that new carpet down. All credit cards accepted. Financing available. Big Marty really does sell carpet cheaper. Big Marty would like this game, Mike. Big. Can play some football. Third down and goal at the three-yard line. Well, Coach, what do you call? Well, I tell you what, anytime I'm in a third down situation with a player like Harvey, I'm going to do what most people like to do here anyway. I'm going to get him on the corner and have him try and catch the Sterling defense between and betwixt. I am convinced this guy knows how to read keys, knows whether or not he should take off with the football or if he should deliver it with the pass. Right now, who's gotten you down here? Kevin Harvey. Who do you have to call? On Kevin Harvey. Where do you have to get him? Out to the corner. 
he knows where the end zone is too, Mike. Mm -hmm. Second leading score in South Jersey, eight touchdowns coming into the game. Third down and goal. The fans on their feet, both sides of the field. Ball at the three yard line. Harvey back to throw, thought about running the draw, trying to get to the corner. Harvey tripped up and he's into the end zone. What a block, Bob, thrown by Charlie Kidd over on the right side. I, do call a, I thought the Wade Paulsburg, a couple of players thought they had a penalty flag, but I don't see one. They're just happy. Now it's an injured player. Mm -hmm. Injured Paulsburg. That's what player. it is. Not his Nevis, I believe. And he's got to kick the extra That's point. right. Time Nevis, out. the kicker, Fish is down out. injured at the three-yard line after the touchdown run by Harvey of three yards gets Paulsburg within a point at 14-13. Ninth touchdown of the season for Harvey. Boy, this is an amazing turn of events. Injury timeout. At this point, unless they have a second kicker, they, they got to go for two and uh, run a similar play here. Uh, again, Harvey's the man. I mean, nobody else gets it but him. Pass, run, option. But I'll tell you what, Harvey's going to thank when he sees the films of this game, Charlie Kidd over on the right side. He was the split receiver over there. He went down. He was a receiver. He would have been the receiver that Harvey's going to look for if the initial receivers were not open. Remember, it was a busted flow to the right side. Kid got into the face of the man who was playing a man-to-man -man who had to come off of him, make the tackle. He was unable to do it, and Harvey got into the end zone. Nevis hurt. It's an injury timeout. Remember, therefore, it doesn't go against Paulsburg. The important point here, it doesn't matter if Nevis gets up or not. He's got to go to the sideline for at That's least right. one play. He cannot kick. Therefore... Unless they had called a timeout, which they didn't do, he cannot remain in the game. you got to set up a two-point play here. They cannot, in my mind, call a timeout now to get him back because of the amount of time given to him on the injury. He must go to the sideline. 7.58 to play. Plenty of time, and they have been dominant sure. offensively. But why not? I mean, at this point, get that two points if you can and jump into the lead, put the real pressure on uh, on uh, Sterling. Well, it certainly removes any second mm -hmm. guessing from, uh, from yeah. Howard, doesn't it? Yeah. Unless a strong backup place kicker that we're not aware of. You're going to find out in a second or two. We'll take the time with Nevis getting him off to the sideline. Hopefully it's something in the foot area, not the knee. I would believe the way they're walking on it must be that an ankle. And he's also the kickoff guy. He's correct. also their punter. And Big loss if he can't come back. And one of the most experienced players on that club. It helps them offensively and defensively. Paulsboro now lining up to go for the lead and possibly the win. Down by a point. They'll go for two. Three backups in the backfield behind Harvey. Harvey rolling right. Oh. Harvey firing back, and it's dropped. It's this note. Harvey had his man open, Mike Bell. Connection not there, and incomplete. And Bell's hurt, I think. Bell's hurt also as he just time plays the ball. Out. The time out. Say, get over here and uh, call to the sideline. Tell him I've got an injury here. That was the change of possessions. Watch, the wind holds this football up. Harvey comes across all the way. He wants to look back now. They're trying to flow against the grain of the defense. And the ball, like, flutters for the first time on any pass he's thrown. And as a result, Bell was unable to get it. He had his man beat. The guy was reacting. But he was reacting after having been beaten. Flutter, flutter, the first duck that he has thrown all day long. And I think it's a result of the change in the uh, field position because of the wind. Great effort by Bell. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they're now tending to him. So, really two different football games. Sterling owned the first half, leading 14-0. Paulsboro has dominated this half, back to within 14-13. And uh, we're going to have to find out later, Mike, what Howard would have done mm -hmm. had Nevis been able to kick the extra point. Uh, so early, would have. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. He would have gone for the one. I'd ask you during a timeout what you do. But there was so much time. We're in charge here. They would have gone for the one. It's still just under eight minutes. 7.58 to play. Uh, they definitely are going to get the ball at least one more time, maybe twice at least. And uh, the way they have been moving the football, I think uh, the name of the game clearly was go for the uh, kick, go for the extra point. Nevis walking around over in the sideline looks to be uh, in fairly good shape. Steve Gurick is the backup kicker, so he'll do the kickoff work for Paulsburg. 
Gloucester County College brings you today's game. Gloucester County College is adding a new $3 million center for engineering technologies, nursing, and allied health. You can enroll in these challenging and re rewarding programs now. Call 468-5000, extension 221, for information. Gloucester County College. Mike, how many uh, games have we done in 13 years that were ballyhooed that we thought were going to be great football games that turned out to be bummers? This one did not. This is just a great football game. They can sometimes, and maybe more often than not, fall below expectations, fall below the advertised kind of game you anticipate. This has not done that. Sophomore Steve Gurick, the pinch hit kickoff man now for Paulsburg, number 69. Bell walking off under his own power, but obviously in some pain. Long way to go, 7.58, Paulsburg within a point. Well, let's see what kind of kick we get here. He has done a great job of kicking today. Not a bad one at all by Gurick. Santana at the 21. Santana finds a seam and makes a nice return to about the 44-yard line, giving the, uh, the Knights outstanding field position. Sterling, which uh, moved the ball very effectively in the first half, not nearly as effectively here in the second half. They want to run off some time. They want some first downs. Ball at the 44-yard line. Fox, he's been a workhorse all day. He gets a couple out, back to the 48. Briscoe with part of the tackle, along with Eric DiPietro. Gain of about four. Second down and six. Clock running, 7.15 to play. Jones. Oh, oh, he is popped. Jones is popped. Great job from the corner coming up that time. I believe it was Jenkins. Jenkins, number mm -hmm. three with a big hit. They have just about a half yard on the play. It'll be third and six. They had two backs out leading the blocking. They had the two linemen that had pulled and were gone down the line. Jenkins split all four of them to get to the ball carrier. Now comes a crucial play for the Paulsboro defense. They want to stop them here. Don't let them continue this drive. The field position because of the relatively short kickoff favored Sterling. This is where Santana is dangerous. Likes to carry the football himself in these situations. The handoff to Fox. Fox gets only a couple. Crosses midfield to the 49, but Sterling will be forced to punt. And they have the wind advantage. Matt Davis making the Paulsborough tackle. Well, they tried that inside trap. It was very good to them a few times in this ball game. It wasn't good enough for them here. Now, fading deep, a pressure gets on uh, Kevin Harvey wearing number eight. He'll be alongside of Sam Swanson. They have to be sure if they go to field this ball that they have a clean shot at it. They can't afford Ooh, to turn it over. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh-oh, look at and this. Paulsburg's going to come up with what a break for the Raiders down on the football. Clarence Harvey, a high snap from center that was not handled by Brian Prinz. And the Raiders get a huge break and take over at the 31-yard line of Sterling. Here we are worried about whether or not Swanson may mishandle another punt, and it becomes an academic issue because he couldn't have uh, hoped for a run back that good to put them in this kind of field position, 30 yards away from the Sterling end zone. Big, big break. 5.30 to play, the clock running. Momentum all Paulsboro's right now. Lots of time, the ball at the 31 with the first down and 10. Need in there, Bob. Harvey to throw, he's had lots of time. Dumps it over the middle, it's completed to DePietro, and boy, he takes a couple of pops, but gets nice yardage down to about the 23-yard line. Defense! Initial hit by Kevin uh, Henry, number 50. Uh, he got some help from the secondary that delivered a message. 
again, he comes in, he looks off to the left and then finds the man on the delay pattern to beat And then watch this hit coming up, bang, from the secondary. That's uh, the big timer, Jay Brook, back in the ball game, number 15, to make that play. Eight yard gain, second down and two at the 23 yard line. Harvey to throw again. Harvey fires it, it's completed the kid. Great catch again, Pitt has had a tremendous game. And he has a first and goal for Paulsboro right at the 10 yard line. They continue to give them the eight to 12 yard pattern. They continue to respect the deep. And as a result, the Paulsboro coaching staff has called the right plays. They say, we'll throw it in front of them. We'll throw it in front of them all day long if that's what they'll give us. And then Harvey has done their bidding. He said, all right, that's where you want it. I'll deliver it. Mike Nevis back in the ball game for mm -hmm. the Raiders. The pitch to Jenkins. Jenkins is hit and dropped for a loss in the play. Big hit by Ken McCulligan of the night. So with Nevis back in, Mike, even though he is noticeably limping, if they don't get it in on three downs, he could go for the game winner on the field goal. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, his presence that time may have hurt him. His blocking responsibility was McCulligan, and he did not handle him at all. Ken uh, McCulligan came across and made that stop. Throw the ball into the left corner. Second down and goal. The ball at the 11. One yard loss on the play. Clock running. Three minutes, 40 seconds to play. They run the reverse. And some room over here for Swanson. Swanson needs a block. Penalty markers down. Swanson battling towards the end zone for the penalty marker. I don't know. Uh-oh. I don't know. Oh, wow. If, if that's called an illegal block, or a hold, uh, we'll have to take a look at it. It's in the backfield just as Swanson makes the turn upfield. Wow. See if we can freeze a it. Uh, call. That is uh, damaging, uh, Mike. Yeah, and I, I don't like to call it all. We'll have to take a look at it again and see if we see it. Let's watch it here. Again, it's this very late and very deep reverse. You don't usually well, see Haley, it run like that way. Now, right out, out in front of him. Haley. Well, we don't see it they here. And down. Second we down. will not see the play, but I'm telling you what, it was a minor, minor uh, almost hardly even touched the player, but we don't see it. Maybe they'll have it on their films later in the game. Uh, not a happy Paulsboro team I know, particularly wh whoever they ruled it against. Now it's second down and goal from the 16. Remember, they're going into the wind, so might be a difficult kick for Nevis if they don't get it a little bit closer. Second down and goal. Harvey back to throw. Harvey, good time. Fires it, the ball is tipped, and it's caught by Jenkins. He is tackled by Barickian, but what a great job of concentration catching that tip ball by Jenkins. So uh, Jenkins gets it down to about the 14-yard line with the third down and goal. Yeah, with the, the danger here is with it being tipped, the possibility of an interception. McCulligan uh, is the Sterling player who did the tip. Paulsboro has one timeout to go, one timeout. 235 with the clock running. That's the other thing. They've got to get some points out of this. No question about it. Either the touchdown or the field goal. Jenkins or Harvey. Harvey. Harvey's going to get down. They're going to be, I believe, I believe they're going to be out of Nevis' range. Yeah, I would think so. With that injury, no question. It'll be, a, it would be a, a very, very difficult call. Good job of pursuit by Sterling. It's fourth down and goal. The clock running 2.05 to go. The ball is at the 23-yard line. If they try to kick it, it's going to be a, a field goal into the wind in excess of 30 yards. Doesn't look like they're going to do that. So this might be the last hurrah for Paulsboro. Let's see what the freshman quarterback Harvey can do. He'll shoot for the end zone. I, I'd have another end in for Nevis to get him downfield. He's just even going to stay in and block. He isn't even going to run a pattern. Harvey looking into the end zone. The kid is batted away. Batted away by number 15, Jay Brook. And Sterling will take over. Well, it's not over. There's 135. They do have a timeout. It all depends now on Sterling's ability to hold on to the football. Will this be just uh, unfortunate this goes down this way, 14 to 13, because of an injury to the extra point kicker right before it. Harvey has no choice but to get the ball into the end zone. He only has one man there that he sees. There was a receiver off to the right who was given area because he wasn't near the goal line. They closed on it, knew what to do here, and knocked it down. Ballsboro has used two timeouts. They only have one timeout to go. They can only stop the clock once, so Sterling Lewis try to run it out. 1.35 to go. 
dead ball foul. Flag on the penalty. Oh, what a great football game. It looks like Paulsboro will drop from the list of unbeatens, but not without a and they rage his second half effort. They will drop out of the foul. top 10. They're they listed at five coming foul. into this game. And Sterling will vault into, Sterling will vault into the uh, top 10 ratings, I would think, for sure. The referee's microphone today is Kurt Storr Cable of Woodbury. First down and five. Thank you very much. Ball at the 27 yard line. Fox. Not much doing. Hit by number 17, Derek, Derek Haney, Haney and hold the ball, Dave. Richardson in on the tackle. And, and Hallsburg using its last timeout with 124 timeout. to go. Last timeout, Hallsburg. What a rough way to play now. They've got three, two downs to get the two yards for the first down and to cement this ball game. Jim Gallagher, two and seven a year ago to turn this around with this ball club. They are multi-dimensioned for the first time in our recent viewing. The ability to run the ball, the ability to throw the ball, the willingness to split people all over the field. And then they have that number one absolute component for a good football team, a strong blend defense. So they have it all. They, if they're lacking anywhere today on today's performance, it was in the punting game, the only place we really saw any uh, weakness shown by Sterling. And if anything, then also the pass defense where they lay off and play deep and give you things inside. Second down and two, the ball at the 31, but Sterling just wants to kneel down, sit on the football, nothing Paulsburg can do about it. I'm surprised they're running this kind of play, Mike. Well, it gives them the first down. Now they can do it without any problem. Now they take all the time. As soon as they wind the clock with the movement of the chains. I, I, had, I had great expectations when I came uh, for this football game, and I have not been disappointed. Well, I'm disappointed over one thing, that two teams evenly matched beforehand, evenly matched in this game. It's coming out on top because of an injury at the wrong moment. That's the only disappointment in this game. First down and 10. Santana, who's had a real terrific game at quarterback for Sterling, kneels down. Nothing Paul's broken can do about it. But, uh, you know, Glenn Howard will bring this team back, Mike. That's uh, one of his great abilities as coach of this football team. This team will not get down. They'll be back next week. I think we're seeing a couple of playoff teams today, Mike. Mm -hmm. Balls were in one, Sterling in two. That's going to do it. Do it. They'll just let the final 20 seconds uh, count it out. Now the Sterling player is just about getting ready to celebrate. Richly deserved victory. Outstanding high school football game, Battle of Unbeatens. And it winds up with Sterling. Defeating Paulsboro, score from Sterling Regional High School. Sterling 14 and Paulsboro 13. The Knights celebrating, and the Raiders with absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about. Great high school football game. We'll come back and talk some more about it after this. It was Ballyhooed, it was advertised, it was written about in every newspaper. It had the attention of all the media outlets today, radio, TV, newspapers, photographers. We got everything we wanted, Bob, except maybe we'll tarnish from my point of view. It comes down, Sterling dominates the first half, Paulsburg dominates the second half, and then as Paulsburg comes back at the last moment on the touchdown play, their extra point kicker, Nevis, gets injured. They don't get a shot to kick it. As a result, Sterling is able to protect the one-point uh, lead and then ultimately the victory, 14-13. to 13. 
one of the better high school football games I recall seeing in a number of years, Mike, and uh, it was everything we hoped it would be. Yeah, it is a shame it ended that way, but it doesn't diminish, number one, from Sterling's effort. They played a great football game, nor from Paulsburg's. You know, I look at it from the perspective they come in, they don't have Jason Diggs. Diggs is one of the best backs in South Jersey. He doesn't play at all. James Davis gets hurt in the first half. He doesn't play in the second half. They wind up with a second string backfield working behind the freshman quarterback. They still come back to within a point, and they're in a position to win it at the end and can't do it. You know, I wonder if it really paid, uh, played to their advantage because it forced them to do something they seemed to hesitate to do in the first half, and that is go to the quarterback, let options, let him throw the football. Harvey, the freshman, maybe not going to be the key in the first uh, part of the game plan, but then with those injuries, he has to do it, and he did not disappoint anybody who came out maybe for the first time to see Kevin Harvey. Well, obviously, at halftime, Mike, they made some adjustments. They figured out they could throw in Sterling, and they did it very effectively. You know, uh, I think anybody who scouts this game who has to play Paulsburg has got to be scared to death now because they knew they could run the football. Uh, let's assume that Diggs comes back in a couple of games. They have the, the element of Diggs running, Harvey scary running the football, and, and Harvey throwing the football to people like uh, uh, like Kidd. I mean, uh, they are a multi-dimensional offensive team. They're going to win a lot more games, Mike. They're going to be in the playoffs. Well, if teams are going to be a little nervous about playing Paulsburg because of what they saw today, how do you think they're going to feel when they have to line up against Sterling? Sterling hits as hard as any high school football team I've seen in a long time. They both do, Mike. Uh, uh, they really played a great football game, and uh, uh, I give credit to Jim Gallagher, his coaching staff. You know, they were 2-7 and seven last year. You talked about that, and they were a, a kind of plotting, unexciting team that, that didn't even, we saw a game that they didn't ever threw the football one time. They've changed a lot. Santana's an exciting quarterback. A lot of things offensively that they haven't shown us before. They're going to be in the playoffs, too. All right, we think you really enjoyed this one. It was everything it was advertised to be. Final score again, Sterling 14, Paulsboro 13. Now for Bob Shryock and Channel 5, I'm Mike Linder. Thanks for for joining us today. We'll look for you next time.